How's it going guys? Lian here and welcome to another architectural video. So for today's video, we are going to be talking about computers and laptops. Specifically, what computer and laptop is best suited for architectural work? So when choosing your first computer or laptop for architectural works or architectural programs, there are mainly five things to consider. There are four specs and then one is the brand. So let's just talk about the four specifications of the laptop. Okay guys, so the very first specification that we are going to be talking about is the processor or the CPU of your laptop. The processor and CPU of your laptop is the most important part of the laptop specifically because architectural programs such as AutoCAD, Revit, SketchUp, and V-Ray all use CPU intensive rendering calculations. It means that this program use your CPU to do all the rendering. So basically your CPU is carrying all the load while you are rendering for these programs. So the first thing that is usually written on a specification sheet is usually the processor. So basically when you're choosing a processor, it says AMD or Intel Core something something. So that is the processor. Okay, in the market right now, there are two popular manufacturers of processors. One is AMD and one is Intel. So I personally prefer Intel because it has been my workhorse since I was a little kid. So I've started with the Intel Celeron, Intel Pentium, and then Intel Core i3, moving on to i5 and i7. So ever since I was a kid, I was an Intel boy. In the Intel lineup of processors, there are three processors that you could choose from basing on how much budget you have or how much money you have in your pocket. So from the cheapest, you have the Intel Core i3, the Intel Core i5s, and then the Intel Core i7s. Let's talk about the i3s and i5s first. So if you would ask me personally, I would really prefer the Intel Core i5s over the i3s. The advantages of the i5s is it is faster than the i3s. So the i3s is slightly slower than the i5s. Also, the i5s have more logical threads than the i3s. Okay, now that we have differentiated the i5 from the i3, what is the difference between the i5 and the i7? Okay, so typically i7s have more cores than the i5s. Also, i7s have faster clock speeds than the i5s. This means that you will have significantly faster render times when you have an i7 processor as compared to an i5 processor. Okay, so let's say that you opt out of the i5 and you prefer the i7 instead. Here are a few things that you should remember when you're going to buy a Core i7 laptop. Okay, so when it comes to laptops, there are two types of i7s. Intel i7 type U, which is an i7 that has U for its suffix and an Intel i7 type HQ. So this is an i7 with an HQ for its suffix. Okay, so the difference between the type U's and the type HQ's is that the type U's has two physical processors while the type HQ's have four physical processors. Meaning that the type HQ's will give you faster render times because you have more processors that will be handling your render calculations. Okay, so for the budget-minded out there, I would definitely recommend the i5s. But if you have a little bit more money, definitely go for the i7. If you are going for an i7 laptop, you might as well opt for the i7 HQs. Even though the i7 type HQs are a little bit more expensive than the type U's, I guarantee you guys that when you start rendering, you see the difference between the type U's and the type HQs. It's, it's gonna blow your mind how fast the type HQs are. Okay, moving on to the second specs of your laptop that you should definitely be paying attention to. This is the graphics cards. There are again two main manufacturers of graphics cards for your laptops out there. One is again AMD and then another one is Nvidia. Personally, I would opt for the Nvidia one because AMD has been known to have some overheating issues and you know, throttling because of the overheating. So I would definitely go for the Nvidia graphics card. Okay, so Nvidia graphics cards have this sort of numerical identification to them. It might be a little bit confusing, but first, but I'm going to teach you how to read those numerical identification. Okay, so here's an example of an NVIDIA graphics card name, GTX 1080. So when choosing an NVIDIA graphics card, the only thing you have to remember is to look at the last two numbers first. Okay, so the last two numbers that is noted on the graphics card name is going to dictate how powerful your graphics card is. So the lower the number means the weaker the graphics card is, the higher the number means the stronger the graphics card is. Here we have a GTX 1070 and here we have a GTX 1060. So definitely the GTX 1070 will defeat the GTX 1060 when you compare its clock speeds and also number of cores. So the third specification, although not as important as graphics card and CPU, but also important is the RAM. <laughs> So what does RAM mean? It means random access memories. So if I'm going to put it in short terms, random access memories for a computer is like the short term memory you have as a person. You know when you're reviewing for a quiz, 
and then you memorize these things and then after your quiz you just immediately forget those things you memorized so that is what random access memories is like for your pc so the minimum requirement for you to run architectural programs smoothly is 8 gigabytes of ram any more or less than that and you're going to experience some lagging and maybe some bottlenecking because of your ram so definitely choose 8 gigabytes of ram 16 or 32 gigabytes of ram the more the merrier when it comes to ram okay now that we are talking about memory let's go to the fourth spec of your laptop which is the disk space or the memory space so laptops nowadays typically have two types of memory one is ssd and one is hdd ssd stands for solid state drive and hdd stands for hard disk drive the ssd is typically more expensive than the hdd but the ssd is so much faster than your hdd because of the fact that it doesn't have any moving rotating disk thingies also your ssds are much durable than your hdds usually when you drop your laptop your hdds are the first things to break when you're choosing an ssd for the laptop i recommend that you buy a minimum of 128 gigabytes of ssd and one terabyte of hdd any more less than those numbers and you are definitely going to fill up your storage super fast okay now that we have finished the four specifications for our computer let's move on to the fifth thing that you should consider which is the laptop brand okay so off the top of my head i'm just going to list like six of my favorite brands so asus acer msi hp dell and razer i wouldn't really bother with a mac because it's really expensive and also i'm kind of salty because i want a mac but it's a little too expensive for my budget so yeah don't don't get a mac just get an asus or an hp laptop and you'll be good to go okay so those are the five things you have to look at when shopping for your new laptop anyways if you like this video please like leave a comment and subscribe down below for more videos like this from your boy lian also i apologize if this video is one or two days late because it's always been brown out here at Baguio city so i haven't really been able to record this or edit this whole information video thing about anyways i'll see you guys on my next video flying peace <laughs>